62.11.25 am convinced and then concerned Shreveport, Louisiana, USC. Let us bow our heads just before we go any further. Continue that, Sister Anagin, if you will, and brother, coming down off of a hill, come a stranger to people one day. Look down upon a scene, a group of men that he had ordained to cast out devils, heal the sick, and he found them defeated on an epileptic case. Bob John was saying, Here's the why we done it over in Capernaum. The other one said, This is the way we done it somewhere else, but it was no results. And the father of the child looked and he saw somebody coming. He ran, fell down. He said, Lord, I brought my child to your disciples and they couldn't cure him. He said, Could you do anything for him? He said, I can if you believe. That same one has been with us. He's with us this morning. I can if you believe. Uh -huh. Our Heavenly Father, in the sacredness of this service, knowing that the God that you worship is not an idol, as the heathens would take the idol and fall prostrate before it of an imaginary God, and believe that an imaginary voice, imaginary voice come to them, that he hypnotized himself into an idol. What a strange thing it is for the devil to do a thing like that, when truly God is a spirit, that he does not come into an idol, but he comes into living human beings and speaks his own words through the man. And we are his living images, created in his image and for his work and for his glory. And we see the sick and the afflicted around us. And then, Lord, we feel we have let down on the job. There's something somewhere we need, Lord. Give it to us this morning, won't you, Father? Standing here, this gracious mother speak of that something they had years ago in that Azusa Street meeting. He was the smallest man there, one to crawl under a bench. God, I wish I could see that happening again, where everybody and people don't not be big, but be little. Humble themselves, God, send it to us again in our days. We are stirring and membership and so forth, but we want Jesus. We want you, the spirit that we know is here gathered with us this morning. We want you inside of us, Lord. We want ourselves out empty us lord and fill us with your presence humble our hearts and we'll praise thee now we have gathered father for fellowship around the word you are the word and we pray that you will divide yourself among us this morning and make us one in heart one in purpose for the kingdom of god's sake we ask it in Jesus' name amen may be seated sometimes when i hear such testimonies as i had the privilege of listening about five minutes to this morning i wish i could just tell that brother come back on back here and just let me set out there and listen to that See, he's speaking of exactly the same thing that i want to see happen again i want uh -huh. the man is just telling what was and i'm trying to say let's have it again now that's just it well as a brother stated there is no man can bring it it takes god and we cannot do it until god does it for us that's right it takes god there's all the schools and all the ministers and all the other educations and all of our denominations and no matter how much we shook our hands and tried to get unity, that would be all right, that would be fine. But it takes God to bring something like that, and that alone. God brings it. I went to this Sunday school and oh Sunday school, I usually don't preach over three or four hours and so I we got plenty of time this morning and I just like to say I've been noticing some of the tabernacle folks down here I didn't get to see them and I or talk to them but I begin now this morning it being a different kind of a light not an artificial light it's a light from the Sun I see some of my friends that I for my first time ever see I see brother Walter Evans and his wife sitting back there and family from Tipton, Georgia. Every time I speak at the tabernacle, that man drives a trip of 1,500 miles, him and his family, every Sunday to hear the gospel. Brother Welch, I just um, wish you and Sister Evans' family there would stand up just a minute. 1,500 miles, thank you. I remember very well the first time seeing Brother Evans, and Brother Marsha said, there's a man who wants to meet you in the morning out of Philadelphia. And uh, when taken, please. And when I was getting up out of the bed, I saw the man, and he's kind of a sportsman, likes to fish. And I saw him doing a violation. So the morning when I met him, I told him about it. She said, "You wouldn't say that to that strange man." I said, "I'll find out what he is first." So then, after talking to him, 
seeing he was just a real fellow, I said, see, just recently he was on a fishing trip back, like in a bio, and you had a whole sack full of fish, and you had to hide them three times, keep away from the game warden. Why? Looking, I said, yes, sir. I, what? His go wonder what I was going to say. I said, they just want a crest. Will you take me fishing back there? His brother had been bitten by a snake back there, which is a grand rattler. I don't know whether they have them here in Louisiana or not. And he's a nasty little thing. And that boy hostel is, he's not a Christian, young little brother. And uh, younger than brother Evans here. And he had to have a brace on his leg, walked on a hoop months. And so right back in the same place, you know, the Lord kind of told me, go back there. And I caught some of the finest bass, oh my, great big fellows. And I had one great big hooked on, was trying to get him out with a bumblebee popper, you know. And so, and he was so big, his mouth about like that. And the little bumblebee in there, he'd stand right up on his tail. You fishermen know, and he'd just flip that thing out. You just have to hold it. If you don't, you pull it out and kind of hard. He was angry and I threw it back and had him on three or four times. He'd have been 12, 14 pounds of fish. So Brother Evans seen me and oh, he's just a good country boy, you know. He and uh, had his trouser legs rolled up because he'd gotten wet. And so he said, he must be old Big Jim. I said, he sure must. So I threw out again and I got one. I said, that's him. I said, no, no, not quite him. It's a nice bass. And we carry little pistols on our hips because you have to fight your way through alligators and cotton mouths to get in there. Just a swamp, 17,000 acres in this ranch. And it's been a dredge line went through. And that uh, years ago, and that's where we was fishing. And so we was hard to wade through the water and everything to get in there and get us snakes just in words. And so we'd take pole and move around. If we seen a ground rattler, just shoot him. And then just walk on in the water, see, keep on going. Cause he'd be laying on top of the lily or something coiled, ready to strike. So Brother Welch said, I'll pick him, him up, your fish. And he jumped off in some little turtles and parts there. And when he did, a ground rattler grabbed him, just about, oh, about a half a mile from where his brothers had got it beaten. Well, he jumped out of the water there with two holes in his foot, his leg, a foot just above like that, where the snake fang had hit. And he said his bones was freezing in him. Now, if you've seen his size, he's lots bigger than I am. And I'd have to pack him about two miles on my back and get him out of there. That was too much for me. And we were sitting there, him holding it suffering. And the Lord just spoke to me, said a scripture. They shall tread on the heads of serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall defy harm them. I said, just a minute, by the heavens. I put my hand on a snake bite on his foot. I said, Heavenly Father, we're in a state of emergency. And it is written, if they take up serpents, or if they tread on the heads, it will not harm them. That was believed for believers. And this brother is a believer. And I'm a believer, and we ask for your mercy. He stopped kind of shh, huh? breathing and suffering the way he was. And I thought he was just in respect of the prayer. When I got finished, he was laughing, said, All the pain's gone. Just put on his shoes and went on. At 11 o'clock that night, they were out there taking pictures when he got to the place where we were staying in the motel. Come back out to the ranch. His brother runs a bed shop then, just across the street. Well, and they was over there taking pictures of these big strings of these big large mouth bars and so he said while we were standing there the story come up about the snake bite his brother said it's good to be religious but uh, not good to be foolish he said you better get to medical aid right now because he was on a hope from the same kind of a bite he said i was bitten this morning about 11 o'clock this is 11 o'clock this afternoon the God that could protect me this long can protect me the rest of the way through. So there you are. See, he still protects me. Snake bites are hung. See, he's seen a brother, a fine boy, working on him to get him to be a Christian. Now, the sinner went to the hospital. Same blood, same boy brothers. 
and the hospital laid hostilize a hoop around his leg, walked on it for a long time, and the Christian the believer stepped right on the same kind of a snake and never bothered him a bit. See, yes, sir. God bless you, Brother Evans. I see Brother and Sister Tom Simpson sitting right behind them. Right behind that is Brother and Sister Fred Southman. The Canadians just come. Brother and Sister Collins, why? Here's Brother and Sister Douch, and here now Brother and Sister Douch is up from up in Ohio. They've been friends to me for long years. Here's our friends from down here in Tennessee, drive for it 100 miles every time I speak, coming to the meeting. All that has associated with the Tabernam Tabernacle just turn up a minute, just come to the Tabernacle. Let's see how many is still represented Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, and North Carolina, New York, Ohio. And they come from the east and west. And they come from the land afar. Is that right? I finally got to hear you, brother, seeing how great thou art yesterday. The folks from down Tennessee, brother or sister, Angren, sister Downing, the brother and sister. I can, Myers, Sister Myers, and Joanne, and oh my, all of them, I love them. And you know, I had a vision not long ago, a few weeks ago, that I was preaching from the sun, and had a great audience, and it will come to pass, and I was preaching, and my audience was a cathedral in the forest, and the sun that I was standing in was shining down on many places. I had two climaxes to make. And I was showing them about divine healing, about visions, and how that God had promised and everything, and they were rejoicing. But then when I got down to make my first climax, was to tell them that all these things was the word. And when I got to say that everybody got hungry, I do preach of long, but they got hungry, wanted to get to something to eat, and started going away. I said, wait a minute, you haven't heard, see? I want to tell you where it comes from. It's the word, the word. And when I started to say it, talking to back about the word and how it was done by the word everybody left well that's how it happened huh? when i stand there the scriptures come to me in a vision sitting in a chair about nine o'clock one morning at my home and then you know our lord when he was his young ministry when he was healing the sick and everything that young rabbi from galilee he was a great fellow but one day he began to get down on the word and when he got on the word the people walked away the servant left him and then he turned and said to the twelve will you go also huh and then i happen to think in my vision yes that's right see i got another climax a great climax i've got to make see but the sun's shining bright now but the evening shadows will be falling after a while they are all be coming back again then i'll make this other climax i raise up my hand say the glory to god i won't have to study no more because my commission in the beginning was stay with the word and i'll stay with that and then when I start again, I just background what I've said and then wait for this climax. And I thought, I mustn't forget it. And I come to the vision. I don't know what text I had, but there's another climax coming. Uh -huh. Just as sure. I want to say to you all here, I don't get to see you at the church very much. Because the church is small and you're jammed in there like I don't know what. And hundreds waiting, come around, turn away and so forth from different states and things. But when the word began to come forth, I want to tell you before, I'm associate pastor here, you know, before this congregation, when the word began to come forth, you know what Peter said, Lord, where would we go? Stay with the word. There was a few stayed. Thank you all for coming down. I don't even know the one of you was coming. Didn't know one was coming because I know it would be pretty jammed up here and down here. And we kind of kept it to ourselves like, and we're thankful you're here. And these are your brothers and sisters in like manner faith thing. This is a little group setting here that's adjoining like you are. We're pilgrims and strangers. We're watching for a city whose build and maker is God. And we're sojourning. I shake their hands and find out how good the cooks here can make cook biscuits. And you'll sure get how many grits. I'm positive of that. So, but just get right in with one another. And shake hands and get acquainted with each other now while you're here. Now may the Lord add his blessings. I want to say to the folks at the tabernacle here soon now, we don't know, they won't let us improve that church till we can buy grounds to put more parking facility. And we can't buy the ground, we'll probably have to move it. And the church trying to help me get out of this debt of $40,000. They're going to, I had to borrow 3000 from the tabernacle to make that up 
part of that and it's kind of hard for us to buy a church at the time but i promised after them seven church ages would talk on the last seven seals god willing we're going to do that right away so we'll tell you by mail when it's going to be and you call and get a hold of billy if you want reservations and so forth so it gets you to a place to stay and you love him even brother palmer the other night the brother what's his name this uh, big fellow around here, Judy's husband, Ernie, Ernie, my, I thought Vec could sing that, amen, and Yeshua had the voice like a bumblebee in a jug, he just really cooled, why, I didn't mean that like that, you know, I meant, you know, way deep, he really could sing that, my, oh, he isn't here, he's he, it's okay, married expression, he wasn't here to hear it, so that's all right, now let's get down now and everybody feeling good say amen now will you try to be out exactly noon the lord willing just as quick as we can have a few just uh sunday school classes are all dismissed are they by the jack and the service is over we're just going to have a little fellowship together now and you know what fellowship is by the bosworth how many ever heard of him because you all have he said to me one day, he said, Brother Barnham, you know what fellowship is? I said, why, Brother Bosworth, I think so. I guess an old saint um, that you knew. He said, it's two fellows in one ship. That's right. That's a fellowship, a Baptist uh, close communion, you see. We sit together now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, heavenly places communing on in Christ by his word, fellowshipping around the word. Isn't that beautiful? Fellowship around the word, everything in common, setting at one table, passing one to another, Oh, Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and dine. With his manna he does feed and supplies our every need. Oh, it is sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Uh -huh. Now let's just open up our cups and pass one to another fellowship and friendship with one another as we look to the word. In the book of St. John, the first chapter, I have chosen this morning a little familiar text to draw a context from. And always these tapes are at the market or at the bench and I don't think they'd sell them on Sunday but if you want to put an order for one something might be said you want to study about it or in a prayer line now last night I want to make an apology before I do this I was going to help brother more do some baptizing last night but I dropped into that line of discernment and honestly I had remember living here now that's right see i'm tired and i've lost uh from 170 pounds down to 135 so i'm um, but with the load off on my shoulders now maybe i can move along a little better as brother william said the other morning in the businessman breakfast said mayors told him said you just got to go that's all a few years ago and right as soon as they told him that he rushed to the phone said you're you're just dying you're losing weight and he rushed to the phone and called and Billy told him come on down they put him over there in the emergency line I went in talked to him a few minutes and prayed for him I think he's gained about 70 pounds since then said the doctor told him said now you go to get rid of some of that weight he said if God put this on me I'm going to let it stay on here so I think that's a good thing. Now, have you got your scripture now? So we can read St. John, the first chapter of St. John, beginning with 30, verse 35. And the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looked upon Jesus as he walked and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? What a question, isn't it? Where dwellest thou? And he said unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt, and he abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finds his own brother Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is being interpreted as stone. May the Lord add his blessings to reading. Where does God dwell? 
What is his dwelling place? How would we know we was at his house? Where is it at? And as he said to those disciples, come see. That's what he'd say to us this morning. He can change. He must remain the same. Come and see. Now, and to draw from this to speak on a few notes I got written here, convinced and then concerned. One, to make that the text. Now, today we find and know and can watch upon the audiences and the moving in which we are grateful for our friends and our loved ones and our fellow brethren and sisters in Christ. But in the face of all of it, we must admit there is a great falling away.